Hi, everybody. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna just say hello. Okay. There we go. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Kathy. So we're going to uh, finish a card we started the other day. I'll show you in case you missed it. We did a little heat embossing, clear heat embossing with, funny story, I was just looking for this folder. I couldn't find it. I realized it was on my desk with the 3D embossing folder that goes along with this stamp set. And this also has a die and stamp set bundle. You can still get this at 10% discount if you buy the bundle now. It is carrying over into the next catalog. I'm sure you've seen, but the bundle price, I don't know if it's carrying over. So just in case, let me see. I'm going to peek in here real quick and see. Friends 27. So I thought we could finish that card and then we can make one more card. Oh, actually there is still bundle savings, even better. So for this stamp set, and I'm gonna put a little marker here. The stamp set is a photopolymer stamp set, but it also comes with a die. Actually it has a couple dies with it. So these are the dies, <laughs> I haven't even used it yet. How terrible is that? But the die is really cool because, and I'll show you, it does coordinate and it will die cut this entire folder, which is super cool. So we'll do a card with the die cut. We will do a card to complete that we started this the other day. I actually did that on a Facebook Live, but it has also a die that goes along with the sand dollar, which is super adorable. The starfish. This almost looks like a claw if you look at it really qu quickly because we claws on crabs. I mean, it's missing one of the pinchers, but like a, a claw. But it's actually really for one of the seaweeds, <laughs> which is really cute. But anyway, I haven't even inked this up yet. So this will be the first time. Now, they are going to be doing a change when it comes to some of the photopolymer stamps where, and I don't have one to show you yet. My order comes Thursday. So when that comes, we'll use that. Which I'm really excited about but it's actually gonna have a piece in the back that has black outlines so then instead of the pieces what you can do is you can just stick it to your stamp case that way you know you'll have everything there so that'll be much easier to use so just to take you back a minute we did create this card last Thursday I believe it was and I used the happy trails and we did some partial die cutting with this little tent here in case you didn't see it and we did some embossing. This is with the new bark embossing folder and it's really cute. So then we just did a couple other tips that um, learned from Jennifer McGuire, one of my BFFs. Just kidding, she's not, she doesn't even know me. But anyway, she did some clear embossing and I'll show you just to catch you up in case you missed it. What you do is on the flat side, so on our case, it's gonna be the side that has the Stampin' Up what you'll do is you're going to run Versamark with a brayer. So I did that last week. And then you put a piece of paper in, you emboss it or run it through your die cutting machine, sprinkle clear embossing powder, heat it to set it. And then it looks like this. So you can see, hopefully you can see, it does have a shiny, there you can see, a shiny component to it. So it's really pretty. So we're going to finish this card. And then I saw another idea that actually has nothing to do with the stamp set whatsoever, but I thought it'd be a really cool card. So we're going to make that one. And then maybe we'll try something with the die cut too. So we'll see. So what I'm going to do to start is, and the card that I saw that was like the inspiration, even though it has nothing to do with it, it's actually in crumb cake. I don't really know how it's going to look, but we're going to try it because I think it might look neat. So I'm going to grab some crumb cake for that. So I have one piece of crumb cake. I have the... 
This one was in Coastal Cabana, but I think it might look cool on layered onto Bermuda Bay since the darker part that's it, heat embossed does kind of look Bermuda Bay-esque. So it's kind of funny if you look at this. It's almost like tone on tone. So we are going to have to trim this down. That's the only thing. So I think we'll do this here. Might look neat to do a black layer just to make the color pop. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with that part. But I'm going to get out some black just in case. Oh, here's a little piece. Hopefully that'll be big enough. And then the final one, which is the one I wanted to die cut, just to do something different. What if we do Calypso Coral? Because that's another really pretty tropical color. So we'll do that. So I'm going to grab a whole sheet because we'll probably do something kind of tone on tone for that as well. So let us get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip you down. That way you can see what we're doing here. I'm going to move just a couple little things out of the way. I have all of my stamps and whatnot. Now I haven't used any of these stamps yet, so please bear with me because I have to unmount them, mount them, all that kind of stuff because I haven't done anything with them yet. And I just want to flip this over. Oh, that was flipped over. Never mind. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you around. So if you do get motion sick, which I totally get it, just look away for a minute. I'll let you know when we're back. Thank you all for joining me today. I do appreciate it as always. Hopefully you'll learn something new here. Okay. And whoops. Okay. We're all settled. So the other thing that's exciting is since my supplies are coming in, that means my DSP share will be in. So I can cut that and mail that out, which will be super, super fun. All right. So just to get started again, we did use the 3D folder that goes along with this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go with that. We have our Bermuda Bay and our black layer. Okay. Let me see what this looks like. Might... This might be perfect. So I'm gonna we're gonna finish this card first before we start something new. I'm gonna grab my trimmer. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this down. This is already scored. This is a half sheet of cardstock. So this is, if I am not mistaken, five and a half by eight and a half, and it's already scored at four and a quarter. So I'm gonna trim the black piece down. That should be four, which it is, and I'm gonna trim it to five and a quarter. Oops. That cut. Nope. Hold on. Had a little piece stuck up there. Okay. And I know this piece is gorgeous, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. I just don't know which side. I think I'm going to take it from the top. So I'm going to trim this down to five. Oh, you know what? I might take a little from the top and a little from the bottom just so I don't cut that Nautilus off. Let's see. I want to go with five. That's a little too much. Five and a quarter. Take a little from the bottom. And, oh, that'll work out perfectly. A little from the top. So I was trying not to, this is the conch shell up here, which I believe that is a whelk. And then the nautilus shell down here, I didn't want to cut too much off. And then I'm going to trim it down to three and three quarters. So I might kind of do the same thing. That way I don't cut too much off of one side just because I really like this image. Okay. All right, so three and three quarters by five. Let's see, that looks really pretty. Now what you could do, because you are gonna have a little bit of, you're gonna notice there's a little bit of a an edge here because this was embossed. I don't know if it just is the nature of the embossing or the trimming after the fact, but you could always sponge the edge of this if you wanted to kind of bring a little bit of depth to it. Really, it kind of depends on what you want to do, but I think it's pretty just as is. And I don't really want to make this too much darker on the edges because since this doesn't have any embossing powder on, it's actually the natural color of Coastal Cabana versus this dark part here has clear embossing powder on it. So we're going to just leave this as is, I think. And I'm going to bring in just a white scrap for the sentiment. Let's see. I have to have some white scrap stuff here somewhere. A lot of random 
random card bases that I didn't realize. Nope, that's just thick white. Okay, so we're going to just take a peek. This has a lot of really nice sentiments, and the nice part is I think they're deceiving because they look really tiny, but they're actually not tiny at all. They're very nicely sized. You are unique and completely amazing is a really great one. Friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. That's a beautiful one as well. I'm going to do love you to the beach and back. Mm, you know what? I'm not going to because I want something. I want something slim. I think I might go with this. I'm so happy I found you. It's kind of like a like a findy seashell kind of thing. And here's actually a nice slim scrap. I can use that one. And you could totally line this up with your Stamparatus if you wanted to. Because sometimes, I will tell you one thing, sometimes I will find that if I'm having a hard time getting it to be straight, it's because I'm trying to line it up straight instead of just putting it down. So sometimes I'll pick up my stamp set. This is just a general tip and I'll put it on there and it'll kind of be like part of it'll be down a little bit. So the easiest thing to do if you are not really, I'm saying worried about precision, but trying to make sure that it's straight is just lay your stamp down and then pick it up. And then you'll be assured that it actually is straight because you won't be trying to bend it to make it straight. I hope that makes sense. It sounds a little confusing. And I think I'm going to do... Bermuda Bay, and I'm just going to put this on a little sentiment strip. This is a little bit big, but I'm going to try to shoot for making it kind of at the bottom. Let me stamp that since I haven't done it yet. That looks good. And I'm going to do it in the middle. That looks good. So this one, we kind of did a lot of the work the other day, so we're just making making a little card with it. You could add, if you wanted to, I forgot I got these stamps out. You could add just a little flourish of ink here if you wanted to have something on the side. So I'm just gonna add just this, it's kind of a fill-in part. But what I'm gonna do, just kinda, I haven't used this before. And sometimes photopolymer can be a little, a little bit particular the first time you use it. I'm gonna take Coastal Cabana So I'm gonna go with the third. Just gonna stamp just a little something so it's just not so white. I feel like I'm not lining it up correctly. Sometimes when I have a sentiment and I just cut it as is, I just feel like I don't do a great job of lining it up. So sometimes I like to be able to add something to it so it kind of distracts from the fact that it may or may not be lined up correctly. So I'm gonna take my trimmer and I'm just gonna line this up and I think that looks pretty good. Just, oh gosh, I did that really great for a change. So I might end up trimming a little bit of this off, but I kept it long just in case I needed it a little bit longer. So all we're gonna do is put this together. This is a really, really really quick card and then the other one we will actually make something because a lot of times I will start a process and then sometimes I won't end up finishing it so I figured since this card was so pretty it would be a shame to not finish it so we have that there we have our sentiment and since we did a lot the other day what if we add something to it now I really am a fan of the metallic mesh ribbon because I think it just gives something to it and it almost kind of looks like a netting. So I think I'm actually going to use this piece. Did this for a Mother's Day card too. And put that right across there. You could even do this so it's kind of coming across so it almost looked like like netting if you didn't want it to be straight. Kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this on and I just want to decide what do I want. Do we like the cross mesh. Do you like the straight? Kind of trying to decide. I think I'm going to go with straight just because it'll be a little bit easier. So I'm going to grab, hopefully it's right here. I'm going to grab my silicone mat and I'm going to use a little bit of, I'm not usually a tape runner, kind of ever since we got rid of the, uh, was it called the snail? I 
don't like this tape runner quite as much. I usually use liquid glue for that reason. But if I'm just hooking something onto the back, I feel like it's okay. But I have a lot of uh, operator error with mine. <laughs> so I tend to avoid it if possible. I just want to make sure that's pretty well in place. Looks pretty even for the most part. And I don't think I'm even going to do dimensionals. I think we're going to just make this a pretty a pretty flat card. The only thing I'm trying to decide is do I want to trim this or not. So I'm going to lay this here just for a minute to see. I think I'm going to have it. Oh, look at that. It's almost like perfectly matched that it matches the layer behind. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to do it just as it is. We're going to just layer this all together just as is. So since I have this layer of ribbon here, not that it's going to lift it that much, but I am going to use a good amount of liquid glue. Okay. And I put this back just a smidge too far. Sorry about that. My apologies. I have to adjust my glue. So I'm going to just make sure that I get enough glue kind of down here. Not a ton, but especially since you have the the deep grooves in the embossed layer, you want to make sure you put enough glue. There we go. So I'm going to pop this onto the black layer. So again, I ended up trimming the embossed layer to three and three quarters by five. And I think I might just pop up the sentiment on a strip. Might as well. I have to, I feel like I have to have something just slightly elevated. Oh. Oops. Getting a little crazy here. Here's one. So I have some of my adhesive strips. And I have, I think, two half pieces that should work pretty well. Put this, do want to make sure it gets pretty close to the end and I want to give it a push just to make sure it stays where I want it. And I think we only need a little piece of this one. Probably could have used a little bit more, but that's good. And then one more thing, I noticed that this has a little curl right here. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my bone folder and it's not really the other direction, but just to make sure it's nice and smooth, I'm just pressing that out. Because I'd hate to put it on there and then should have done that. But I'm going to go ahead and take my release paper off. So again, if you're coming in late, we this was kind of a card in progress. This was a cleanup from the other day. I'm trying my best to kind of center that. And that way it's centered this way. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm just going to press down to make sure that it is fully adhered like so. That looks good. And this would be a great card to send to a friend. If you have a really close buddy that you've been friends with a long time, that would be a great card. I love this. Super Super easy. Now, granted, again, we did start a little bit in progress, but really, really cute. Not too complicated. So that is one. Now for the other card, what I said I wanted to do, oh, forgot to move my trash can. I'm just going to put this away. I wanted to do something with the embossing folder and die cutting it. So that one is going to be the one that I was going to do on coral. So let's do that one next, only because we have to die cut. So for that one, I'm gonna trim this. And same thing, we'll just stick with tone on tone for these. So I'm gonna go ahead and, actually I'm gonna cut this four and a half, four and a quarter, I'm sorry, four and a quarter, and I'm gonna score it at five and a half. This will be our base. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to four by five and a quarter. That way I don't have to do it after the fact. Because we are gonna trim it anyway, so we probably, should be fine with doing it this way. We'll see. See if I live to regret that. So one other thing, when we were talking about embossing the other day, if you do spritz your cardstock, it kind of gives it a little bit more push or give to the cardstock. So since this is a 3D folder and I am using a Big Shot, not the newer machine, I am using my regular platform and my blue plate, call it the blue plate special. 
I'm going to take my embossing folder and just have it open. And I'm going to move this over just so I don't goober that up. And I'm going to just take a spritzer that I already had some champagne mist in it and some alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to just spritz this and then I'm going to put it in here. It'll give it a little bit deeper of an emboss. Plus it'll have a little shimmer to it. So it's kind of like a, a two for one. So I'm going to put this in here. And again, I'm going to try to center it because I am going to die cut it. So I'm going to take this, close it, put this, put my blue plate, and I'm going to go back and forth twice with this. Okay, so you see it has a super deep etching. Now, this is still a teeny bit damp. So I'm not sure if it is going to be better to cut it when it's damp or if it will be a little bit more difficult. So I'm actually going to dry it just to be on the safe side. I've never cut it. It's not really wet. It's slightly damp, but I've never cut it that way. And I'm thinking it might tear the paper. So I'm going to just dry it with my heat tool. Just kind of go over it quickly. And I just had a thought, which would be really, really cool with this. But now that I've already said this, I'm wondering how, how good it would be. <laughs> so this is going to line up and die cut this. And I'm, I'm torn between doing it like this or putting this layer and doing a die cut vellum layer over top or even a die cut pearlized paper over top what do you guys think because I bet the pearlized paper over this will be really really pretty and I did just get a new pack of it so I'm gonna wait a minute because I know who somebody said "Ooh, vellum the only thing that makes me wonder is what do you think the vellum you know there's only one way to find out <laughs> we will try it and find out and by the way Cindy if I'm not mistaken I believe you sent me a Mother's Day card thank you so much for that it was very nice of you it's funny because every once in a while I'll get a card and I'm like huh who's this from and it's from one of you all which is so sweet all right so we're gonna try this again so I'm gonna go back one more time so this is a piece of vellum I just cut it to the same measurements four by five and a quarter I'm just gonna pop this in here And I'm going to run it through. Vellum doesn't really take water, so I'm not even going to go through that step. But I am going to go back and forth twice like I did with the other one. And then let's see. We, we, this might look nice or it might not. We don't really know. So it did emboss well, but I will tell you one thing. You can definitely see a lot of white edges, and I definitely did not line this up as good as I could have. I think I might have cut I think I might have cut it just a smidgey too small. But so you can see and you can definitely specifically see the white marks on this. I must think the pearlized paper would have looked nicer, but just with following the thing here, let's do what we said we were going to. So I have my magnetic platform and I'm going to put my vellum down and I'm going to put my very actually I'm going to line this up as best I can first and put this on it's pretty slim so it should be fine because that vellum is very thin and i'm going to die cut this all right let's see what it looks like oh ah, gosh this is i gotta tell you i really wasn't thinking this was going to look so good when we first did it because of the the white pops in the vellum, but it's really cute. The only problem is I probably should have backed this with some adhesive sheet because now it's going to be a real stinker to put some um, adhesive on. I mean, I know I can do mini glue dots, 
But so let's put this together and we'll see what it looks like. And this could be one of those ones where you're kind of like, eh, not my thing. So you know, and you didn't waste any of your paper. So we're gonna go with, we have this and we have this piece. Definitely has, it has a lot of etching. It has a lot of marking to it because of the thinness of the vellum. As a matter of fact, I don't know if this is or isn't supposed to be die cut here. I don't think it is, but it is. So remember, vellum is definitely much more delicate than any other paper. So let's go ahead and do this. And I think what I might do for this one, just to make it stand out a little bit more, I think I might go over my die cut, my previously die cut piece with a little bit of inking. So I'm, my blender brush is completely dry. Well, I mean, it should be. That was last week. <laughs> and I'm going to do a little bit of Calypso Coral on my blender brush. I need to order some more of these. That's what I need to write down. And we'll just kind of go over just to pick up a little bit of it and accent it in a couple areas. Kind of just will make it hopefully pop a little bit more behind that vellum. It kind of almost, this sounds a little crazy, but it makes you notice the shimmer a little bit more. Hmm. So added bonus. And I think for this one, because there's not going to be a black layer, that I'm going to do the sentiment inked in black. So we have our piece here, our other piece. And granted, we do have some spots here where it could probably hide the adhesive. So I think I'm going to go with glue dots. And there's a couple, I just want to grab, there's a couple little pieces. The, the little inside pieces of this came out really, really simply as well. This probably would have been smart for me to put adhesive sheet on the back. I could have just peeled the whole thing off and been done with it. So keep that in mind if you're watching this on the replay. We are currently live, but some people do catch it on the replay. So if you're one of those people, add your adhesive sheet first. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple in like some spots where there's lots of little seashell markings. I'm going to put some mini glue dots. You could also use liquid glue because that will dry clear, but you would really have to put a nice layer over the whole thing. And let's see here. Let's see. I have, I think I want one more in the middle because I don't really want it flat but I kind of want it so it at least does stick where I'm, I want it to be. Let's do that. And I'm just going to flip this over. Yeah, the adhesive sheet is so much easier. I will say one thing. I kind of wish I would have cut this different because this line down here is a little weird. But what can you do? So I'm just going to give it a press. So where I have those little adhesive pieces, I didn't put any up here. I probably should put at least one right up top here because as much as I don't want it flat, I also don't want it to, to rip off. So let's see if we can put more, one more under here somewhere. And one more, this one I'm going to kind of fold in half. Now, Worst case scenario with doing this, I have one little spot of all the things I can see this one and this one. So worst case scenario, if you really do not like that, you could always even add some gems on top of it to cover it up. So these are some of my favorite, the little elegant faceted gems. So I think I'm just going to put a couple little, just a little tiny one over here. I'm going to change to my other tip because I think this one's easier for picking up those little tiny Gems. So we'll put one here, maybe one over, oops, here. So kind of so it's not really exactly the same. So here, here, I'll put a little, wait, some kind of have a little bit of action of different ones. Put one off to the side. Just a little change it up a little bit. So again, I wish I would have cut this. I probably could cut it down, but... That's not my favorite part because of the way I cut the vellum. So just be aware of that. 
And then I'm gonna put this on with some heavy adhesive. So I'm really gonna make sure that I put a lot of liquid glue so it doesn't pull up. Just kind of like I did before. And then what I like to do is kind of move it around a little bit before I really press it. So I feel like the glue underneath kind of moved and it's not in just one goopy area. So there's that. So it does have a lot of white accent accenting because of the presses on the vellum. So you kind of have that too. So since I have this out, I'm just going to, it's not going to really take a lot of ink because vellum doesn't typically hold ink very well, but it'll just maybe take a little bit of the white edge off. Yeah, it's just a teeny bit. There's that. I think I might trim just this little piece off here because it's kind of hitting in a weird way. Okay, just gonna take those couple little doodads off. There we go. So I think somehow I'm gonna have my sentiment down here nearer to the bottom to kind of cover up that wacky looking area. Maybe we could use one of our larger sentiments. Because you almost don't want to cover this up. Let's see. Might need just a little bit bigger. Here's what I'm going to do. Again, I am going to go with black. You could even do this with, if you want to add a little extra to this, uh, black heat embossing or black embossing powder, not heat embossing. Jeez, Rach, come on. I'm going to do VersaFine and then I'm just going to dry it. But the other thing you could do is add a little bit of clear embossing powder. Oh, smudged it. Okay. So I am, just for the sake of drying this, because I'm going to be that kind of extra today, I'm just going to sprinkle this because this, the VersaFine does stay wet a little bit longer. And I'll heat set that. So I'm just heating this. My heat tool wasn't warm, so it's gonna take a moment. But just in case you've never seen this before, this is the powder that is not heat set, and you can see it looks like a light gray, and then this is black, this is heat set. So you want it to be black and shiny. And then I'm gonna just give that a second because it will melt and it hurts your fingers if it gets stuck to your fingers. It's kind of like when you touch wax or something. <laughs> All right, that looks good. So I'm going to take this. I have this little teeny scrap that I goofed up. I might add that to the inside somehow. Let's see. Okay, and again, just because I know this is kind of a big piece, and I'm going to trim some of this off because I wanted to kind of cover that up. I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier, but I'm going to use a, a seashell, just a smaller shell, and I am going to do the Calypso Coral, but I am going to stamp it off first. Yeah, we'll go with two and three. So it's it's a little bit smaller. And let's see, just kind of judging side size wise. I'm going to cut it on a diagonal. And I'm gonna cut this just a little bit more down. 
down just a little bit more. And I'm going to trim just the top of this off just a smidge. Hopefully I can do this with my... Usually can't cut a very good straight line with my slim scissors. Okay, so I'm going to pop this up on a dimensional. Again, this is just me kind of trying to cover this up because I goofed the bottom of this. So if you're doing this after the fact, you could put this absolutely anywhere. Would I normally put it right there at the bottom? No, but I'm just trying to kind of cover up my whoopsie. And really quickly, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to take my sponging. I probably should have done this before I put the dimensionals on. I'm just going to sponge the edge, just kind of with whatever's left over, just to take a little bit of that bright edge off of the white. There we go. And centered. There we go. Like that. It's kind of right along this line here. And then one other thing I'm going to do Hold on here a second. Is I'm going to put seashells, and I'm going to do this with regular memento, just so it's not. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to do it with the coral again. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go kind of straight across, but in different directions. Hopefully this is somewhat straight when I'm done. Okay, so I have a little, just a little shell pattern. And I said I had that little teeny piece of vellum. What in the world? Where did it go? Where did it disappear to? Ah. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, well, when I locate it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it across the center here. Oh, here it is. I'm going to put it across the center. Now, if you stamp on vellum, you really have to give it time to dry because it does take a little bit to dry. So I'm going to grab my memento. And what did we say on the front of this? Happy birthday to my beautiful friend. And I'm going to say wishing you the very best. I'm going to grab this. Man, my hairs are everywhere today. I don't know if it's my hairs or little teeny vellum strings. I'm just going to pick this up. Okay. Ink it. I haven't used this yet, so I just want to stamp it to make sure. So I'm going to try my best to line this up. Okay. It is going to be a little bit lighter because of the nature of the vellum. And one other thing, I'm just going to tell you this now, it takes a little bit to dry. So I'm going to put this on here, but you really, really, really either need to do two things. Let it set overnight to dry. You could hit it with your heat tool, but sometimes that makes the vellum a little bit wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on this. And I'm going to do enough on the back that I can kind of spread it around with my finger. It will blend in once it's dry. Okay, so I'm going, to, I'm going to flip this over just so I can do this once. And the reason I'm saying once is because once you touch it, it will smud, smear it. So just be gentle. Okay, pick this up. You see there's a teeny bit of off print there. And I'm going to lay this here. And it should dry clear. Once it's done, I'm trying my very best not to touch it, but I kind of want to press the part around it down where there is wet glue. That way you get a good adhesion. So that, whoops, oh, darn it, I just smudged it. Oh well, that is the way life is today. I was being so careful and I'm going to snip this. But vellum can be a little bit tricky to stamp on. You definitely need it to, to let it have time to dry. You know what? That's what happens. Everybody makes mistakes. And everybody that gets a card from me knows that there's some little special something or other to it. So there's that. Okay. I am going to leave this open, though, just so this part has time to dry. So that was that one. Okay. And finally, one more. This last one we're going to do. This was kind of an idea I saw. Again, it was um, tone one tone, which we've done a lot of. But this was a very natural look. It had absolutely nothing to do with this card whatsoever. I will show you the layout when I'm done with it, and then you'll understand what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and score this again at five and a half. 
and then cut it at four and a quarter. And then we will cut our second little sheet. So here's a card base. If you want to use this one again as a base, um, you also can, we can make this just like a one layer thing. So you could make two, but I'm not going to make two, but we could make two. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this. We're going to really press it down. Okay. I'm going to grab my crumb cake ink. And I'm going to try to follow a specific design that I have in mind once I saw this. So I'm going to grab the starfish stamp. You could also do this with the sand dollar. Sand dollar would look really cute. Actually, let's do the sand dollar and then we'll use the starfish for the other part. So sand dollar. Inking it up. We're going to try to kind of vary the way the sand dollar is. I know it's a sand dollar, so it's kind of hard to vary it. So there's that part. Then I have, where is my little card that I cut earlier? Here. So I have, this is just that little piece from earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, and I'm, again, just kind of eyeballing. I'm going to say this is probably maybe two by two. Let's see. Two, now eh, let's go with one and a half by three. That looks about right. So one and a half by three. Let's see if I can get another piece out of this. We'll use this side. One and a half, oops, three <laughs> by, did I say one and a half or was that one and three quarters? One and three quarters. One and three quarters by three. Since I'm using the other half of this, I just wanna make sure that this little scrubby part is kind of off. So we have two little white pieces here. And then we can use this little scrappy piece for the sentiment. So here's what we're gonna do. We have this and this. And let me just Okay. I really just need to cut to change my blade is what I need to do. All right, so sentiment wise. We'll do this. The friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. I'm going to do this in... What color do you think we want to have our, our offset? Do we want to do Coastal Cabana or do we want to stick with Calypso Coral? You guys pick. I'm going to give you a second. And the reason I ask is because that's the opposite thing we're going to do it in. So... Thank you all for the shares and the sharing. I'm just checking the comments here. In the meantime, I'm going to mount my starfish. And what else do I want? I need something else that's a little bit... We could do this little piece of kelp. That'll be good. A little sea kelp. All right. Brush color on the shells. That would be a good idea. That's a good idea. The shimmer vellum, I do love that uh, pearlized paper would probably be really, really good with this as well. And I kind of want something else a little bit small. I think I'm going to do these little dots. All right, coral. I only got one answer. So, Cindy, we are going to go with coral. Making your day. Okay, so I have my coral. So I'm just going to move this over. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our starfish. And this is for our sentiment. I am going to do this in kind of full strength ink. I should have done this the other way. That's okay. And I'll say like that. I kind of just want a random smattering of images, if that makes sense. And then we'll do our kelp. But I'm going to stamp this off first. And again, changing directions so it's not precision lined up in any form at all. Oops. One more. Over here. Okay. And then we have our little dots. I'm trying to make that really light. So I went to the third inking with that one. You can barely see it, which is good. Because you just barely want it on there. 
Okay, that's good for that. All right, only other thing we need is the sentiment. So hopefully this is gonna fit. Yeah, I think it should be fine. I just wanna make sure this inks up well since I haven't used it. I almost wonder if I should do something just a tad darker, but we don't have, you know what would have been good would have been terracotta tile, but since that's gone, you could try it though. Um, Cajun craze would be way too dark for what we're going for. Now, if you went with Costa Cabana, you could move to pool, uh, to Bermuda Bay. But So I'm going to try my best. I cannot see this because where the camera is, so I'm going to try my best to line it up. Oh, that was great. So proud of you, Rachel. And I'm going to do this. So just kind of stamped off. I'm going to do one more with the little dot situation. Okay, good enough. Here's what we're going to do. I don't know if this is going to be too much. Maybe I should have added, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back with the crumb cake and the sand dollar, and I'm going to line these up. Hold on one second. I'm going to line all this stuff up so it's right next to each other. So it has some cohesion in it, but I'm going to stamp it all first. One. I'm going to move this down here. That was full strength, which is okay. And then we're gonna do one more uh, like this. Okay, so hopefully this will be good. Let's take a peek. So here's what we're gonna do. I'll move all these over and this. Okay, so we just have our very simple base card, not a lot to it. These. Oh, you know what? Now I might have to trim these down just a smidge. Hold on. Work in progress. Bear with me. Let me go with one and a half. I'm going to take some of this off. Which side? This one. Yeah, you know what? I need one more little thing. I need one more little thing, and I have a piece right here. I'm going to see what this measures to just kind of make this a little bit better. I think we went with one. What is this? This is a weird piece. This is like one and three-eighths by, what is that? Two and just over a half. So let's go with this. One and one, two, three, four. We'll do one and this two and two and a half, we'll do two and three quarters. Let me see. This is just kind of approximate. That'll be good enough. Just a little backing piece there. Okay, so for this piece, one other thing I am going to do, just to get a little distinction on the edge there, is I'm going to take my soft suede Stampin' Rate marker. You could do this with a Stampin' Blend if you don't have it. You could do this with your sponge if you don't have that. Just kind of something to differentiate the edge. And I'm going to do it with this one too. Just tracing the edge. Just to make this part stand out a little bit more since it's the sentiment. Okay. And I put that together in a minute. We're going to put this one here. Just layering this on top. Like that. Probably could have. While I have it, hold the phone. One more thing. I'm going to add one more of these because I really wasn't quite sure how low this was going to stick out. That's good enough because I don't want to overdo it. My one that was over here I think would be covered up, so... That's why I added that one. So we're going to just put these on. And I just want to see, is there anything else I want to add to this? I think this might be it. You probably could throw in a little, like a little Baker's Twine bow if you wanted to, which we do have that new five pack. I didn't even get that out. Forgot about these. These are my other goodies that I ordered. So you have the little um, in color jewels, which they're a little too bright. So they would be great, but not with this card. They had a coral one. The Baker's Twine Pack 
You do get five, so you get five neutrals, which is really nice. We do have, what is this one? The woven ribbon. What in the world color is this one even? Um, pale papaya and white. That, oh, I could have used papaya. That probably would have been a nice base color to start with because this will be a little too dark. Let me just see. See, just a little, little bow. Might be a little too dark. Let's take a peek. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Talking to myself while I'm bowing. I'm going to trim this. And if I don't like it, we can always omit it. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Well, that might be cute. We'll have to see. Oops. Okay. All right. So that is a nice ribbon. It's a nice tying ribbon, by the way. Just FYI. But still, I think the mesh is my current, like, favorite, favorite ribbon. All right, so we're going to put this down. Make sure I have a lot of glue on this since it's on the back of a different paper. And same with this one. All right. Where are my pieces so I can see if they somewhat kind of line up? I'm going to go like this and like this. And then we're going to put this one up on... Oops, here they are. Dimensionals. Four. And we'll see if we do or don't like the bow. You could always add some rhinestones to this. Or some little sequins would be really cute as well. And... I don't know. What do we think? Bow? No bow. You let me know, and we will go with what you say. And let me just clear a couple of these things out while you are deciding so we can see what we have here. I used some scraps up today, which is great. So I used little pieces of stuff I just had laying around here, which is always, always awesome. All right. And I think that is it. So I'm going to just check through and make sure I didn't miss any comments or questions that anybody had. Let me move this out of the way. We will bring our cards back in. Here's our other one. Karen likes the bow. All right, Karen. Well, you're the winner then. Thank you for saying so. I'm going to put this one with a little mini glue dot. Actually, I might do two just for the heck of it. I'm going to move that down just a smidge. There's that one, and this is, oh, it actually looks like it's almost dry. There's a teeniest little bit of wetness here, but here is our one with the vellum, the vellum version. So we have, just depends on what color scheme you probably like the best, honestly, because they're all really very nice with the tone on tone. And I'm going to show you this one. So this has totally had nothing to do with this. This was the card, and again, it was a quick, it was a quick take on it, but on page 36... Simple card. You got these two little rectangles. Theirs is a much smaller sentiment, which probably could have gone with that as well. But you can see very tone on tone with the stuff in the background. And then they brought in three colors. Most likely, these two are the same, just stamped off. And these two are the same, just stamped off. So I would bet this is probably, I think it looks like, I don't think it's magenta, polished pink. Or maybe Melon Mambo. But really pretty. Very subtle. Nice card. Just adapted for this. You can see why I said about the Baker Swine. Because they just had that layer there. But easy card. And I thought this would be really pretty with the seashell. So that was just a totally off the cuff ending to it. I hope you guys enjoy this card video today. Thank you all for stopping in. I know sometimes I start a little bit earlier because it just depends on when I can escape <laughs> to make my card. We ended up having lacrosse last evening instead of tonight, but since I already tell you guys Tuesday, I hate to change at the last minute. I'm like, oh, 
oh, so I'm not going to be here. So I knew I wanted to do it tonight, but we just started a teeny bit earlier. But again, if you miss this, this is one that I did on Facebook the other day with showing how to emboss this. It was really simple. All we did was put that together. So that does have a clear layer of embossing in case you missed that part. And then this one, we ended up embossing underneath. So it does have a layer under it. I would highly suggest if you're going to do this with the vellum to put the adhesive sheet to it. And you can do that very easily. And if you put it over the whole back, it virtually disappears into it where you can't see it. However, there are just, there's one here that you can see for the mini glue dot. But otherwise, unless you knew where you were looking, you really wouldn't even know where that was either. So I hope you guys enjoyed these. If you would like to purchase any of the supplies to make these cards, you can head to my online store, which is open 24-7 reach the stamper.stampinup.net. However, if you do have a really large wish list, might want to consider joining my team. You can right now get $155 worth of anything. So essentially you can build your own kit for $99 and it ships for free. It'll be part of my team, the Rainbow Stampers. And we have lots of team members that are just hobby discount shoppers. They are happy shoppers. Everything you get after you join as a demo, you do get a discount on, which is awesome. There is no stamping, videos, blogging, sharing, or anything required. You can just purchase for the discount and go on your way to make your cards. Thank you guys very, very much for joining me. I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up on this video. If you would share it with someone. If you would leave me a comment or a like. And I truly appreciate you joining in week after week. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at rachethestamper at gmail.com. Or if you have something you'd like to see made, please let me know. I will be getting my box, my big delivery on Thursday. So I'll have lots of new goodies to play with, which I know this is in the um, occasions catalog, but it will be carrying over. So I'll have lots of new, new stuff to play with then, which is super exciting. Thank you guys for taking time to join me. I really appreciate it. I know you have plenty of people that you can watch. So thank you so much for stopping in to say hi. I'll see you